Okay, so in this video, we're going to install screen copy on Windows 10. So what screen copy allows you to do is view and control as well as record the screen of an Android device on your Windows machine. And it does not require a rooted Android device. So we're going to start by downloading it from this GitHub page. So if we just scroll down, and by the way, the link as always is in the description. We have a couple of options to install this on Windows. So if we have the chocolatey package manager or the scoop package manager installed, we can just run these commands. But what we're going to do is actually download this file here. So just click on it to download and the download should happen automatically, which has just opened up on one of my other screens. So I'm just going to drag that in and I'm going to minimize the web browser because we don't need that for now. So what we're going to do is double click to extract this and then we're going to highlight all of these files and press extract all. And then we're going to click browse and click on this computer and then click on local disk, so C drive. And we're going to create a new folder here. So just click new folder and just call it SCRCPY. Press enter to create that folder and then click select folder. Now we can click extract. So now that we've finished extracting that directory, we can just get rid of the, the downloaded file because we don't need that anymore. So just delete that and we can close that. So this is the directory on our C drive. And what we need to do is add this directory to our system path. So to do that, you want to go to the start menu and you want to type in ENV. And then the best match is edit system environment variables. So you can just click on this. And then we're going to click on environment variables over here. And now we have a choice. We can either add the directory that we just created to our user path, which means it's accessible to us and only us or we can add it to the system path, which is down here, which will make it system-wide accessible. So other users on the same machine will be able to use screen copy. So that's something that you need to make a decision on. I think you actually have to have an admin account in order to edit this. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is just edit the user variable. So we're going to click on path and press edit and we want to create a new entry and we're going to type in capital C colon backslash SCRCPY. So that is the screen copy directory that we created. And then you can just click off of that and then click OK. So now that's been added to our user path, we can just press OK and we can get rid of this box. So just press OK. And we no longer need this to be open, so just close that. So in order to run screen copy, there is another component to screen copy. There's a component that screen copy relies on to connect to your phone, and that is the Android Debug Bridge, or ADB. Now, the package that we downloaded contains that, so we don't need to worry about installing anything else, but we will have to use that tool as well in order to connect our phone and then run screen copy. So all of this is done using the command prompt and it's really, really simple to use. So we're going to start off by opening up a command prompt. So just go down to the start menu and you just want to type in CMD and then click on command prompt app. And what we're going to do is start a new ADB server so we can connect our phone to our computer. So we're going to type in ADB space start dash server. It's really that simple. Press enter. And after a few seconds, we should have a new ADB server and you can see it started up. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our Android device. So your phone or your tablet, you need to unlock it and you want to go into settings by dragging down from the top, press on the cog, scroll down to about phone. And you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And where it says build number, just keep tapping on that seven times and you will get a message that says you are now a developer. So you have unlocked developer options. Once you've done that, 
back out of about phone. So just get out of that. Click on system. So tap on system and then advanced and scroll until you see developer options. So if you tap on developer options, you want to scroll down and make sure under debugging that you have USB debugging enabled. So you can see I have that blue tick and it is enabled. So once you have enabled developer options, what you want to do is plug in your phone. So just get the USB cable that came with your phone, whether it's USB-C or USB-B, doesn't matter, just whatever fits your phone. Plug that cable into your computer, into a free USB port, and then plug in your Android device. And you should get a message on the screen of your Android device that says allow USB debugging and you want to press allow. So to check that our phone is actually connected to our computer, what we need to do is type in ADB space devices, press enter, and you'll notice that we have a new device added to this list. So now that that's working, that's all we need to do. And as we only have one device plugged in and connected to our computer, we can literally just type in screen copy and you'll see your phone's screen come up on your computer. So if we just type in SCR CPY, press enter, give it a second. So now we can actually control our device from our computer. So let's just run a speed test with fast.com. And that looks pretty good. So let's just get rid of that. Let's just go home. So we've established that now we can connect to our phone and we can control it from our computer. I'm just going to close this. So now let's record the screen of our device. So to do that, all we need to do is type in SCR CPY space, and we can use the shorthand version, which is dash R for record, or we can type in double dash record whichever one you want. So dash R to record and then give it a file name. So let's just call it uh, file1.mp4. Press enter. So right now we're actually recording the screen of our device. So let's just open up something. So let's just do fast.com again quickly. So all of this is actually being recorded. And to stop the recording, we just need to close the window. So just press X and that's done. So now if we just run DIR, you can see that we have this over here, which is file one. So let's just play that file. So it's actually stored here. So I'm just gonna open up a new file explorer and I'm just gonna go directly to that. So here's our file and let's just play it. So I'm just gonna double click on it and let's just skip forward. So you can see that this is the correct file and let's just close this and I'm just going to delete this recording. So that's how you can record your Android devices screen. So now let's move on to something a little bit different. So with your phone still plugged in over USB and we can confirm that with ADB uh, space devices, you can see our phone is still there. What we're going to do is we're going to set up our phone so that we can connect to it over our wireless network. So in order to connect to your phone using your wireless network instead of the USB cable, you need to make sure that your phone is on the same wireless network as your computer is, and you need to get the IP address of your phone, which you can get in the settings, which I'll show you now. So drag down from the top of your screen, tap the cog to get into settings, then tap on network and internet, and tap on the network you're currently connected to, and in this list, tap on that network again. Then tap on advanced, scroll down in network details, you should see the IP address of your phone on your network. Okay, so now we have the IP address of our device. What we want to do is we want to first enable TCP IP on our ADB server. So you want to type in ADB space TCP IP space. And now we need to enter a port number that we can connect to. So the default port is 5555. So let's just use that and press enter. 
and it says restarting in TCP mode, we can now disconnect our phone from the USB cable. So just unplug your phone, which I've done now. And we want to see if we can see our phone. So we're going to type in ADB space devices and just give it a second. And you'll notice that we still can't see our device. So what we want to do is we want to type in ADB space connect space the IP address of your device. So mine is 192.168.1.7. And the port number that we set up previously, which was 5555, and press enter. And if you look at your phone screen, you'll have another allow USB debugging. Just press allow. So you see that on the screen it says fail to authenticate. Let's try that again now. And it says it's already connected. So if we now type in ADB devices, you'll see that our device is listed, and we can just use screen copy because it's the only device connected at the moment. So we can just type in screen copy to connect directly to our device. So I'm just going to press enter and there we go. So this is exactly where we left off. And if I just press the um, home button, let me get rid of this. You can see that now I am controlling my Android device totally wirelessly. And we can do the same thing for recording because now that our phone is connected wirelessly, we can just do screen copy dash R, press enter, and you have to actually enter a file name. So in fact, let me just change directory to the desktop so the file ends up there and I don't need to go hunting for it. So CD desktop and screen copy dash R and let's call it file 2.mp4 press enter and we're now recording so we can use it and record at the same time let's just open up a game so let's open up crossy road and let's go and i died Great. Okay. So that's a short recording. Uh, let me just drag up from the bottom of the screen. In fact, I can actually just, I don't know why I'm using the mouse to control that. I can just use the phone that's in front of me. Um, let's get rid of that and let's just stop the recording. So let's exit that and the file is here. So let's open that up and let's just uh, skip through that a little bit until we get to the game. And there we go. So we have successfully recorded our Android device and controlled it remotely over Wi-Fi from our desktop computer. And as you can see, the quality is actually pretty good. Um, let's just close that. So let's just go over a couple of things if you do run into issues with this. OK, so one thing about stopping the ADB server. So I'm just going to do that now. So ADB kill dash server and press enter. So we no longer have an ADB server running. So if we just type in ADB space start dash server. So just wait for that to start up. Okay, that's done. Now we've already set up our wireless connection to our device. So we don't actually need to go through and plug the USB cable back into our phone or tablet in order to set that up again or connect it again. All we need to do is go through the final step of connection, which was ADB space connect and then the IP address. So for me, it's 192.168.1.7. And then the port for that, which was, we set it to 5555, press enter. And if you have a look on your screen, on the screen of your phone, just make sure it's unlocked when you do this. You'll have a message saying allow USB debugging. Just allow that again. Remember there's a tick box there that you can press to just allow it for the foreseeable future. So I've just um, pressed that now. And now if we type in screen copy, we can connect and we didn't have to plug in the USB cable to set that connection up. We did that totally wirelessly. So right now I've actually just picked up my phone and I'm just using it. So let's just do this again. Um, let's just get rid of this. 
and to stop the connection we just close the window on the Windows 10 machine. So I just added that because I don't think that was very clear in the video. So that's how to connect to your Android device from your Windows 10 machine and I hope you found this video useful. One thing that I would recommend is you actually check out the documentation on this page. So if you just go down to, um, I think it was called features, there we go, features. So have a look at this features section. Um, I'll probably link that uh, down below as well. So check the description. So it will just jump you to this section of the page. But this covers a whole load of stuff that you can do with screen copy. And it's pretty simple to do all of these things. So that's brought us to the end of this video and I hope you found it useful. So thanks for watching and goodbye.